fall in between these two. It falls right in between here. A little, little bit closer to the three. A little sharper than the two. It's a natural base E. And um, the number E itself is defined by, I gave you the equation, I'm going to move this in a second, as S approaches infinity. And I kind of gave you a table, I don't, I don't want to move this yet, but I'll be on it. It kind of works, and you don't have to memorize this. Here's your y equals 2 to the x. Here's your y equals 3 to the x. And your base e falls somewhere right in between here. A little bit sharper next to the 3. Um, it's a natural base e, and it follows this formula. Okay, and do you have to know this? No, but we use the base e um, for certain things. Certain things like, I don't know if you remember when we compounded continuously. We did compounding in Algebra 2. We did regular compounding interest and we did compounding continuously. If you use continuously, you have to use e. Um, it's it's a, a natural base log that we can use for anything. It works just like your other bases. It's just a base of e. And it, it has the same attributes. It falls through the point zero 01. It has the domain, same thing. It has the same range, and it has the same natural asymptote. So it has the same attributes as your other bases. It just, as it approaches infinity, it stays very, very close to the same number. It, it's just the one that acts like this. Um, and base E, you have a base E on your calculator as well. Um, You do the ln for the opposite one to see where your ln is. Your base E is right above it. You have a ln button and you have a log button. The E is right above here because this stands for natural log. Okay, so your E is, is out there as well. And instead of 2 to the x, we just use E to the x. Okay? Um, it graphs the same, the transformations work the same, it has all the same attributes as any other curve does. And for us, those are the only things we're really going to have to worry about right now, those kind of things. Um, so when we sketch this, well, let's start with an easier sketch first. If we started with this, we would be graphing e to the x. And where would we move this? Outside of it. One more. Up two. Did you guys go granddad over the vacation? Uh, yeah. Yes. So your zero one <laughs> went to plus two. Zero three. Okay, there's your intercept. The domain that doesn't change because you're doing a vertical shift. It's only going to change your range. So your range before was 0 to infinity. We moved it up to 2 to infinity. So it has all the same attributes as before. Now the nice part about the base E as well as any other base, you can graph it in your y equals just the same. So this guy has kind of a dilation effect. If it's greater than 1, it's going to do a stretch. So I'm stretching it. It's hard to see on an exponential curve because you really have no other base to put it against. But you can put this in your calculator. And then in the second one, just put the 2 in there and see what the 2 is doing. I'm going to try to pull up my calculator and see if that works. The last time I didn't have good luck with it. And your base E is right above your LN, the blessing. If you notice right above your log, it's 10 to the X, because your log is a base 10. Your E is not a base 10. Any 
and your other ones too, those are not. So the only one that really works with that other one is, is your log base 10. And we're going to, I don't know if you learned how to change your base. Did you use your change the base formula at all? Um, in Algebra 2, you change the base to get to base 10 so you could graph it. You put the log x over log 2, whatever one you would use. <coughs> ah, yeah. It's a good year. I couldn't get this at the end of the year to come up. I was getting worried. Okay, we'll just graph that one, and then underneath it, we'll just graph 2, e to the x. I'll graph this one darker, just so that you can see it. There's your natural log, and there's your plus 2, or your times 2. Did I not do it right? Times 2. It should still fall through the same thing. So the, it's changing your distance from zero. You can see it here. Okay, it's multiplying everything by two by a factor of two from your distance to zero. Um, the the base e log is probably the easiest one to to graph and look at it through your graph. Let me see that calculator back. Then throw this in and see what this does. And then throw that in and see what that one does. So um, you're still getting nice sketches and you're still able to get through this. It's still going to cross at the point zero two. And uh, this guy too with the negative and the one half is just going to give you an opposite way. It's taking half of your point. Your point was zero one. Half of one is, is a half. So this is the point, zero, one half, and it's dilating it over here. All right, so it's going to sketch the same way. It's going to have the same attributes as before. Mostly we learn this because as soon as you start doing your interest, when you compound the interest, you're going to have to use the base E. You use it continuously. And you're going to find in most of your college books, they use the natural log versus the regular log because it's just easier to keep. If you're not in base 10, you're always changing your log base. If you're in base 2, if you're in base 3. So it's easier if you're doing something just to work in base E because you have a base E key. You don't have a base 2 key or a base 3. You'd have to change your base for that. The only base you can graph on your calculator is a base 10. If you're just in a base 10, if a log base, when we do log. So they, they tend to use the E quite a bit. Okay, the second part of this, and hopefully this will be familiar for you guys too, is your compound interest. Now, I always find this a difficult subject for you guys because, you know, you're all, some of you are working, you, you put gas in your car, you go to the movies or do something fun. You don't really have the money to throw in the bank and invest at a certain interest and see your interest grow. And unfortunately, even if you did, your interest doesn't grow very quickly. Um, if, you, if you get a penny a month, you, you get such a little amount, it's ridiculous. Um, back in the day, we used to get like 3%, 5%. Now it's like 0.1%. It's like the most ridiculous amount. So you there you can like Daniel said you can see like you get a penny in your account if you have an account that's accumulating interest for you. It's really not a lot of interest, but our interest problems that we're going to do here, as examples, we're going to of course have a much higher interest rate, or you're really not going to see a difference. And then you're going to say, wow, I wish I had that interest rate. Now, when you invest money, let me just talk for a second. When you invest money, say you invest a hundred dollars at 5%. So the first month, how much do you make? $5. What do you do with the $5? Put it back. It's put it right back in. So the next time, you're making 5% from 105, right? Now, 
If you're figuring this out yourself, you're saying 100 plus 5 is 105. Now, when we do your interest, we do this piece right here. We say 1 plus 3. This is what's happening. 1 plus 0.05. We're going to multiply this by 1.05. What that does is this. This is your 100. This is 100% of your 100. And 5% of your 100. It's adding it automatically back in. So it's accumulating your interest to the next level. So if I multiply 100 times 1.05, it automatically adds it back in for me. I don't have to pull over to the side and add, do a little add, add my interest in, get my new amount, do it again. So this formula is accumulating your interest as we go. If something is not gaining interest, it's depreciating, we do a 1 minus the rate. So say, for instance, it's depreciate your car. As soon as you know you see that commercial, you got to see that commercial with the, I think it's State Farm. The guy that says, I just got a brand new car, and I come out, and the truck hit my car, and they want to know, were your lights on? Were you, so I wasn't even in the car. He says, and then, and then I never even had an oil change, and my car is $3,000 less. Your, your, your cars already depreciate as soon as you drive them out of the lot. So, say it depreciates at 5%. What's happening is, when we do this, you know that commercial? What we do this is, it's retaining, when we do it with the minus, it's retaining 95% of its cost if it's losing 5% each month or each year. Equipment. Like when people buy equipment in, in companies, their, their equipment depreciates, um, your car depreciates. Not too many things depreciate, but those kind of things do. Your house hopefully appreciates, you know, increases. <laughs> it doesn't depreciate. But in the market, your house can depreciate in value, you know, because of the, the market value. So. What I want you to be aware of is why we do a 1 plus and why we do a 1 minus. The 1 minus is, is taking the 5% out, retaining 95% each time of what's left. And it will have the same effect. If something starts out at $100 and then becomes 95, we take 5% off at 95. So it keeps decreasing at a, at a faster rate. It's not a standard rate. Now that will decrease at a slower rate, this will increase at a faster rate. So today I want to talk about the interest part of it, and then we'll talk about the depreciation part of it. But it all kind of works the same. And does it look a little familiar to you guys from last year? You probably did this a little bit differently, and we added the N part. The N is how we compound. Like when you bring your money into a bank, it's sometimes compounded daily, compounded continuously, compounded yearly. That's when they calculate your interest. It's a whole algorithm formula that they use to calculate interest. And just because it says continuously, and that's when we have to use the E, it's not that much greater than if it was yearly or monthly, depending on obviously how much money you invest. So we're going to take a look at how we compound your money, which is how we calculate your interest. The principal, what you put in, this is what you put in. The accrued amount, this is what you get with interest. And your interest rate, your interest rate is always going to be flipped to a decimal, because you can't use a percent, and time. We, we usually talk years when, when we're doing this. What happens after five years? What happens after three years? So we usually talk years. We have really one, one version of this, and that's this one. How we get to this short form is when we compound yearly. When we do yearly, n is equal to 1. So if we took this one out, and we took this one out, we get the short form. You can only use this if you compound yearly, because n is equal to 1. If we compound monthly, what is n equal to? 
twelve. If we compound quarterly, how many quarters in a dollar? Four. If we compound daily, good, you're sixty-five. If we compound, uh, we don't really go down that far. Weekly. Um, weekly. How about semi-annually? Two. Two. Weekly. Fifty-two. So these are what we compound. If we compound continuously, it has a separate formula. We have to use base eight. Okay. So basically we're working with two formulas. The compound continuously, as soon as we see that, we call this PERT. Did you call it PERT last year? You never let you did in Algebra 2. It's on your region. We missed that day, I know. Uh, so we're going to talk about compounding continuously and compounding um, different times, different times each, each each very year. Believe it or not, they are doing this in like seventh and eighth grade now. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Well, it's kind of smart. So that we, yeah. So we find yeah. Like this, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Well, so the thing you know, we did last, I have no idea. You know what it is? When it's the moon. <laughs> Guys, when, when we teach this in Algebra 2, it, everything in Algebra 2 moves a little fast. We have a lot, a lot of topics to cover. And with Common Core, they've removed a lot of them. They've put them down each time at a lower grade. So that by the time you get to Algebra 2, you actually have a better concept. In the beginning, I wasn't really crazy about Common Core, but to be honest, I have two grandsons. One is in fifth grade, one is in ninth grade. And my fifth grader, I was working with him the other day, and he snapshotted me his his uh, problem. He actually didn't finish his packet. And you know what it is? They don't really learn by formulas anymore. They learn by diagrams, pictures. Um, you know, they have like he had two triangles and two different rectangles. And they gave him the dimensions of the rectangle and one side of the square, and he had to figure out what the sides of the triangles were. And the two triangles were congruent, they were congruent, and they were equilateral triangles. It didn't use the word equilateral, it said all sides of the triangle are equal. And he had to figure out the sides of the triangle, given that they took a wire that was 200 feet long or whatever, and they made this, this diagram. So I think what's happening is, I think you guys missed that any math part where you say, oh, if I figure out the wire around this piece and I figure out the wire around this piece, I'll know what's left over. But nobody thinks that anymore because there was so much to do all the time that we just kept throwing formulas at you and formulas at you. And everybody's like, well, what do I add? What is, what is the area? What is the, what is the perimeter? It, it, it's a different approach now. They're actually making the kids think. He's got interest problems that if they, he's in sixth grade, if, if five dollars grows, and it, it uses different words, of course, you know, if it's growing and you're adding money to it, you know, at, at a different rate, he knows how to multiply. The multiply and the divide are crazy, the way they teach them now, but it works. You know how you guys did a box for your um, foil? Remember the window for foil? You know, remember, like, if we gave you this? Let me, I just think this is really, this is really, we're given a certain amount, and this is what you start with, your principal. Okay, we're investing it at a rate, pull off all your values, and turn this into a decimal. After one year, this is your time. Time is one year. What is the value if n is equal to annually, one, quarterly, what is quarterly, <coughs> four, what is monthly, how many months, oh, well. so, weekly, daily, 365, and continuously, this is per. 
that one has, you'd have to do by, by yourself. Now, use one formula through the whole thing.